late October. The heat wave is more implacable than ever. The lion's attention switches to the elephants. Even in the riverbed, all green vegetation has disappeared and the large herbivores are left fasting. Deprived of their beloved mud baths, they powder each other's backs as protection from the sun and from insects. The elders tirelessly maintain the wells so that the whole group can drink. And with their powerful rumblings, they inform their fellow elephants for miles around that they can quench their thirst here. The most vulnerable are favored. A mother tugs away the trunk of a too eager youngster to make room for her newborn. She doesn't take her eyes off him as the lions are prowling. Big cats await a mother's slightest moment of inattention. Their strategy is simple, to somehow isolate an elephant calf. But the young, sheltered at the heart of the herd, remain permanently under close supervision. The lions manage to isolate two adults and two youngsters. But the matriarch is watching. And she repels the enemy with authority. The lionesses resign themselves to leaving the elephants to their meal. The pachyderms need 150 kilos of feed each day. They savagely strip all the acacias within reach. Under the onslaught of this too numerous herd, the savanna, already devastated by drought, is transformed into rubble. Even the nests of weaver birds bear the brunt of the destruction. This baobab is not dead. For nine months of the year, it remains without leaves. It is stripped of its bark and emptied of the tasty flesh it contains. But more especially, it is the thousands of liters of water stored inside its trunk that interests the elephants. Most of the time, the colossus survives the assault and its wounds heal. But not always.